back, 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 mm. back, back, back. Back in action. I'm Ronan Swinton. And I'm Nikita Orenzo. And on our lovely couch with an amazing guest, we got mm. Roscoe Williams. Welcome, Roscoe. Hey, thank you. It's amazing to have you on show today. <laughs> cool, it's a pleasure being here. Well, so uh, Roscoe is all the way from Marie to Rise. Mm -hmm. But before we go into that, Roscoe is going to tell us about himself. So tell the people where you're from, where you grew up, things like that. Yeah, so my name is Roscoe Williams. Uh, I grew up in Westridge, Mitchell's Plain. Uh, attended primary school at Mitchell's Plain Primary. Uh, went to Westridge High. This is where we grew up. Played soccer in Westridge, you know, did things that boys did here. This is where I grew up most of my life. Um, yeah. <laughs> so tell us where did you like your heart beat for like this community come from? Look, we grew up in a home where we my parents and, and they, they brought us up in a way we were very much for community. Mm. And um, you know, I my, my previous work um, I, I was involved with business and uh, I was in the liquor industry. So uh, later in, in, in my life I actually discovered that um, maybe it wasn't the right position or business to go mm. into. And that's when my, my way of thinking changed um, to see the effects of what alcohol had on, on our community. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, so we got involved with an organization called Tour the Schools that was working in the schools. So that's where we used our business skills and management skills to try and uplift the schools, to try and help them. Um, and that is where eventually we ended up. You know, mm -hmm. And that's where we came, we, we got a footprint in Mitchell's Plain, and that's why we decided to trying out the community with one of the most, one of the biggest problems, which is a literacy problem, mm. where our children are struggling to read or they don't want to read. Um, and that's why, read, that's how Read to Rise was born. So what is Torah Schools actually about? Torah Schools was a organization trying to help schools. We believe that the school needs to run as a business. Mm. So sometimes the principal is there, is a principal, he has to see to all sorts of mm. issues on the school besides um, the business side and that's what we thought we could come in as an organization to try and help them like I said with our business skills and unfortunately it all, all depends on funding so the funding wasn't there we were unable we gave advice and we tried to assist but obviously with our team that we had we were obviously unable to support the, the team mm -hmm. um, whereas now with the to rise it's more a lot more um, it's a product you know we the books so we can market the product and people are investing in, in the organization in order to provide books to the, to the children. Okay, so tell us a bit about Retourize and how it began. So Retourize was started in 2013 by Ethel Williams, who is my brother, and Taryn Locke, um, where we simply we identified an issue, which is the reading problem. And Ethel decided, you know, um, initially we went to bookstores to go and buy books, and we thought well, the books are quite expensive. Mm. And Ethel, being an avid writer, he thought, how hard can it be to write a children's book? He came up with a story called Oki and the Sun. And we went to one school, our first school was Middle Ridge Primary, and we went there to one class and we conducted a lesson. So we don't just drop off books. We got a lesson that we've done, uh, we designed around the story. And we spent about an hour in that class. So it's very interactive. We have posters and flashcards, so we get the learners to interact with us and you know, mm -hmm. answer the questions. Mm -hmm. And to see the reaction of those kids that day, mm -hmm. it was where we came together after and we said, look, are we going to do this? And that's where I thought, look, I'm going to put all my effort into this, into this organization. So 2013, we are here in 2019, going strong, almost six years, giving out over 150,000 books. Sure. Uh, we're working now in three provinces uh, with the help of the amazing sponsors. You know, uh, any NGO can tell you funding is an issue. So even though we've been truly blessed, uh, it's still an uh, issue for, for us. But we continue going and providing mm -hmm. these books to the learners. Comparing Rise to 2013 and to, to now, what is the biggest, the, you know, the biggest, the biggest challenge? Um, look, uh, the challenge is the funding. But if you look at what we've accomplished now, where our first group of learners of 2013 has started grade 8 this year. So there's kids that's in high school, you can go and ask them about their OK books, they know about wow. the OK books. So basically every child at that primary school from grade 7 to grade 2 has received those books. Whereas um, no other organization does this. Mm. You know, I, every school I go to always ask the children, who else comes to your school to give you books? They would say, no one else comes to my school. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth, you know. So we go there, it is brand new books. It is uh, not a cheap book. So, you know, we, we're telling the children, we're investing good quality mm. in you. You know, and for many of these kids, it's the first time they've ever owned a book. You know, the things that we take for granted, um, when we give the children the book, you'll see on the first page, it says there, this book belongs to. 
So when you tell them you can write your name and surname, because mm. remember we taught not to write in the books. Yeah. Here you're mm. telling them you can write your name there. They, they will sit in the shop. When they're done reading it, they ask you, must I give it back? They say, that is your book. And a lot of times these kids can't comprehend that, mm. you know, because they, they've never received the books. I mean, the readers that you get from the schools, you must read it, and then eventually you must pass it on to the yes. next learner. That is your book. And that is our aim to give children access to brand new books. Mm. You know, um, back in the day when we grew up, we could walk to the libraries. That was, yeah. that was fine. You know, now it's unsafe to send your children to the library. Yeah, it's true. So that's why our whole thing was, um, if you can't go to the library, we'll bring the library to you. Mm. And that's why we provided those books. So we got two programs. One is called Book Ownership. We want to provide all these learners with their own books. So you got your books, you can sit down and you can read. And then we have another um, program where we call it, it's a mini library, so it's a wooden shelf. We got an organ, uh, awesome organization called Workshop Unlimited in Children that train handicapped people to make wood products. So they make our shelves and in the shelf there's 50 books, English, Afrikaans, depending on what the teacher wants. There's branded retorized and we get it sponsored or say on there sponsored by whoever it is. And this get placed in the class. So then the children have more books, wow. more access to more books. And you can see, you can go to some of the schools, they, they really appreciate it. Um, some don't have books, you know. Um, so we go there, we give them these books, and hope that the kids are inspired, you know, to mm. read. So how did you decide to have this? Because I'm pretty sure it didn't just begin these two programs. How did it start? And look, why? We, Look, you've un identified an issue. Mm. So if you go to a school, what is the problem? The children have books at home. Now some parents can't buy the children books. Some parents can't buy the children mm. books. So look, we want to be fair to everybody, right? So we want to give everybody these books. Yes. That is one of the problems, as children don't have books. So we try to solve that problem by giving them books, brand new books. Uh, with the mini libraries, the issue of the libraries, like I said now, in terms of safety, you know, um, so some parents don't want to send the kids there. Mm. So when there is spare time for the learners in the class, then you have books in the class. Read in the class there. Some teachers um, work at a system where the learner can actually take the book home and then obviously return it. It's also risky school to school because you know the mm. book never comes back. Yes. Um, we also have a what we call a, a, it's a reading competition. So we've got a tracking chart. It's a huge post to be put up on the wall and every time we a, a child reads a book, then we reward the learner with the sticker, yeah. the teacher. So you can see hey, Roscoe read 12 books. Now yeah. you want to obviously beat Roscoe. So yes. in this way, it gets the learner that doesn't want to read, he also wants stickers. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to that competition. Guys, we're going for a break. We'll be back with Roscoe and Rita Rice. Stay tuned. Auntie, stay there.